Welcome to Fire Engineering Training Minutes. I'm Jason DeFossi along with Dale and Zardman, and we're building off the last lesson that we talked about, which was active engaging with this vehicle, using our fire blanking and cooling and keeping everything under control. In this next segment, we're gonna be talking about fire suppression and or cooling the battery and going completely offensive. Dale. Yeah, so in these transitional modes, uh, where we're trying to determine is the event over, do we need to switch tactics, we want to be very systematic about identifying what the hazard level is. So when we have a blanket in place, we've done our 60 minute wait period, we're going to burp or breathe the back corners of the blanket. As those back corners come up, we're going to evaluate our fire and gas production. If we've identified that we still have an active thermal event, but we can't be in a holding pattern any longer, that can be because of infrastructure needs, the necessity to clear up the roadway, whatever those pressure points are, if we have to switch gears and go offensive, we want to quickly remove the blanket with lines in place. We'll want to be actively cooling that vapor so that we don't have a vapor flash. It's important not to just drag the blanket off of the vehicles. As the blankets sit on the vehicles and they're in a thermal condition, the blankets can start to adhere to the structural steel within or the structural metals within the vehicle and as they melt and bond to the vehicle if we just pull we can tear and perforate the blankets so we lift those corners we cool our vapor and then we roll the blanket back across the load once the load is exposed we're going to attack the vehicle to improve our access to the vent point so how does that play out we're going to use hydraulic spreaders and simple step chocks. Remember that this is still a very high hazard environment where we're initially engaging with the vehicle. And if we can't do low profile appliance settings and, and you're not equipped with that as a fire department, we need to lift the vehicle so that we can apply our stream to that pattern where the vent is. So we're going to advance a nozzle just like we've done all, all in all the previous segments. We're going to create a connective or a protective water cone for our firefighters to approach. We're going to initiate a lift at the proper lift point, which we'll talk about in detail during the sequence. As the vehicle comes up, we'll position two uh, double stacked step chocks. Then we'll place the vehicle on those step chocks and that'll give us a better access to that vent point. When we apply cooling pattern to that vent point, the goal is to get internal penetration into the battery pack. So this is not about high volumes of water flown at high pressures and GPMs. This is about controlled bail settings. So the nozzleman is going to advance that nozzle once the area is relatively safe. He's going to gate that bail down and he's going to attempt to fill the bucket. When we say filling the bucket, this is why we've kind of progressed with the wheel chocks on the opposing side, we want that vent pattern or that hole in the battery pack to be on the uphill side of the load. If it's on the downhill side of the load and we're flowing water in there, all the water is going to flush right out. So we want to be on the high side of that lift, uh, penetrate that cooling pattern into the battery pack and start filling up the entire battery pack with cooling water. That's awesome. So the team's going to come in, they're going to demonstrate these different uh, tactics and we're going to do that now. So the firefighters are approaching the corners. They're going to burp and open the blanket. And as the vapor releases, the nozzleman is going to cool the vapor while they peel back the blanket. The nozzleman will now immediately relocate to the B pillar, provide a protective cone for access. He's knocked down the fire. He's going to go to a wide fog, allow step chalk placement and spreader placement. The spreader is going to be oriented on the lift point of the vehicle which is a straight line down from the roof line where it meets the windshield. The load is going to come up. The step chocks will be positioned. Once the step chocks are positioned, the load will come down and rest on the step chocks. Communications are critical to make sure there's no pinch points. The three rescuers evacuate from the space and the nozzleman retreats last. At that point, that pattern is going to be redirected. to try and get a direct approach on the vent point of the battery ensemble. And we will attempt direct cooling patterns into the battery pack. You can see even with the simulation that that is actually redirecting the smoke pattern back into the passenger compartment, which is an indication in training that he actually is penetrating the vent point. We would maintain that cooling pattern until we see decreasing CO and decreasing temperature in the vapor. As a result of a well-planned team effort, the team was able to come in, lift this vehicle, start cooling operations, and eventually suppressing 
and displacing the heat, cooling these battery packs. Many different tasks happened at the same time. That's why it's very important to train on this particular evolution. So you've got it down pat. When we're faced with these types of challenges, visibility is poor. When we're placing those step chocks, we must ensure that we're in the best position possible. And all this is done under smoke and heat. So it can be very challenging. Dalen, what other challenges could the team possibly go through in something like this? Yeah, let's, let's make sure that we refresh our important takeaways or our foundational principles with this. Um, number one, if we let it burn, we're gonna let it burn. Number two, if we can't let it burn, we're gonna contain it with blankets. Number three, if we have to get aggressive and go into offensive-based operations, the end goal or the driving approach is that we have to get cooling, penetrating water to the inside of the battery pack. So this is not about high volumes of water. This is not about high pressures of water. Control your bales, look for those vent points, and execute proper pattern within that penetration on the battery pack. Uh, and another important uh, facet that we may face as a challenge is water supply. So because we're not super efficient with this modified angle application, you are going to use more water than you would if you were directly applying it right into the hole pattern. So make sure your water supply is established and make sure you're ready to sustain and support this operation once you commit to it. That's awesome, Dale. And on behalf of the team, thank you for watching Fire Engineering Training Minutes.